This is the story of the girl with the scorpion tattoo. Hello my darlings, I hope you're all doing very very well in today's video. I'm doing something a little bit different. I've been a big fan of true crime content for a long while. It's honestly pretty much the only content that I consume at the moment when it comes to creators creating things. Um, especially podcasts, my favourite ones are Mile Higher and Murder With My Husband. It obviously sounds incredibly morbid to say that you enjoy this kind of content, but I love the amount of investigating that these podcasts do and it's something that I thoroughly enjoy myself when making content especially with my tattoo etiquette series I do try and put in as much research as I most possibly can and I very much enjoy doing that and for me I like to make content that I personally would enjoy watching you know as someone that has a big interest in tattoos and this kind of led me down a path of is there any sort of true crime stories that involve tattoos that you know I can implement within my channel because I will always make tattoo related content I will never stray away from that so that led me down a path of googling true crime cases that involve tattoos and one really sparked my interest and that is the girl with the scorpion tattoo I just wanted to do a content warning from the beginning here it is pretty graphic in places obviously this is a true crime case so it's not going to be all, you know, roses and butterflies, sadly. So if content like that does make you feel uncomfortable, I completely understand. I know for a fact that true crime is not for everyone. So if you need to skip this video, I completely understand and I will catch you in my next one. Okay, so let's get into the story of the girl with the scorpion tattoo. So this case actually begins over 30 years ago. It's the beginning of autumn in the state of New York and the date is September 20th, 1991. Early in the morning, a man was walking around Ocean Breeze Staten Island when he stumbled across a body-like shape figure in a vacant lot feet away from the sidewalk in a grassy wooded area. At first he thought it was a abandoned mannequin but upon closer inspection he realised it was a body. He alerted the authorities immediately. The police arrived and inspected the body and what they saw was absolutely horrific. This body was of a woman who they suspected to be in her early 20s. She was badly abused, beaten, burnt. The woman had shoulder length brown hair, brown eyes and was wearing a black dress with a pink trim and white trainers. She was left face up and was handcuffed. Underneath the victim was a hammer. The hammer that the police found was a type of hammer that auto body repair people use and it also had a scratching in the handle that said Lloyd L. Investigators believe that the body could have been left there the evening before. Sadly the woman had been beaten 17 times with possibly the hammer that was left at the crime scene underneath her body. The woman's fingerprints were put into a local and state database for identification purposes and sadly nothing come up. She didn't have any criminal record or anything like that. Obviously with everything that this woman went through, with the type of abuse she went through and being burnt and what have you, it's obviously very hard to identify bodies like this and sadly that was the case here. The only identifiable feature that this woman had other than the outfit that she was wearing on the day that she got murdered was a tattoo on her right buttock of a scorpion. This is where the victim got the name the girl with the scorpion tattoo. Investigators relied very heavily on a sketch of this tattoo to see if they can use it to identify this woman. They were hoping that someone that knew her recognised the tattoo, whether it was a partner or a friend. They were hoping there might be a tattoo artist that would be able to recognise it and identify her. The sketch of the tattoo was put in news articles on local news stations. A sketch of her face was also put out. Sadly, after many efforts and many years, nobody come forward claiming that they knew the victim or they had seen the scorpion tattoo before. And she was known as the girl with the scorpion tattoo for a very long time. Investigators tried to figure out this very mysterious case and they really wanted to find out who was responsible for this murder. They relied very heavily on the hammer that they found and they scowled far and wide, especially within the autobody repair shops to see if someone knew 
who Lloyd L was. Sadly, this led to a dead end and they couldn't find any information. There were many theories from reporters and the public as to who the girl with the scorpion tattoo was. There were so many people that were invested in this mystery. Some people thought she could be an immigrant with absolutely no family or friends in America or the state of New York. So they would be completely unaware of what had happened to her and, you know, didn't have access to the news. To see the drawing of the scorpion tattoo, which of course is in incredibly sad and that is something that does happen very often. You know, there are sadly victims of heinous crimes and they are alone in the country that they are murdered in and nobody comes forward to claim them because they are unaware of what has happened. There was another theory that she was a victim of a serial killer who went by the name of Joel the Ripper. Joel, who was from New York, was sentenced to 203 years in prison for the murders of nine women between the years of 1989 and 1993. It's also suspected that he probably had around about 17 victims that were unaccounted for. The medical examiner that worked on the case of the girl with the scorpion tattoo kept a vial of her blood and a sample of tissue just in hopes that in a few years' time, someday it would result in answers. See, technology in 1991 is vastly different to the technology that we have now in 2023. So much has changed. Testing has improved vastly. Technology improving can be scary at times, but it's also such a great thing, especially when it comes to crime. Investigators did not give up on the girl with the scorpion tattoo. They really wanted the answers of who she is and who is responsible for her awful murder. In 2008, when technology had advanced a little bit more in comparison to 1991, investigators wanted to try out testing the girl with the scorpion tattoos DNA. They submitted her DNA into something that is called CODIS. CODIS stands for Combined DNA Index System and how it works is CODIS consists of three levels of information. Local DNA index systems where DNA profiles originate, state DNA index system which allows for laboratories within states to share information and national DNA index system which allows states to compare DNA information with one another. The victim's dental records were also submitted to the FBI. Unfortunately, after all of this, no new leads come up at the time and she was still known as the girl with a scorpion tattoo. We're now going to flash forward to 2019. A detective by the name of Michael McMahon decided to look into this case again in hopes that now that it's 28 years later from when this woman's body was discovered and 11 years on since the last DNA result, technology had advanced even more further and that he would get some answers. He really wanted to know who the girl with a scorpion tattoo is. He worked alongside the FBI and Orthram. Orthram is an organisation that specialises in DNA and identifying victims of homicide and criminals. Their website says, Orthram combines laboratory science, software and process to build a better and more robust infrastructure for justice. Orthram's technology enables local, state and federal law enforcement agencies across the United States and internationally to break through previously impenetrable forensic DNA barriers and close previously unsolvable cases. Othram uniquely performs all casework related service in-house with the essential infrastructure and process for testing forensic DNA evidence. Othram is committed to continuous iteration and improvement, learning from each case, refining our technology and our processes regularly. Forensic evidence from the case was delivered by person to Othram in Texas. Othram managed to develop a suitable DNA extract and then used forensic grade genome sequencing to build a comprehensive DNA profile. The profile was then delivered back to investigators and they worked alongside the FBI genealogy team to perform necessary genetic genealogy research to produce and investigate lead for the case. In April 2021, after all of their hard work, they finally managed to identify the girl with the scorpion tattoo. This is because the DNA matched the victim's biological brother. The girl with the scorpion tattoo's name is Christine Belalusco and she was from Morris County. County, New Jersey. Authorities discovered that Christine was adopted as a baby and was raised by a couple by the name of Frank and Dorothy Belusco. When Christine found out that she was adopted, she told her family that she was moving to Florida. Once notified of Christine's death, 
Her family had absolutely no idea that Christine had died. They all assumed that she was just living safely in Florida. I couldn't find out any information about the relationship that Christine had with her family once she claimed to have moved to Florida. I'm assuming that she had cut all ties and that obviously led to no suspicion from the family. So that obviously means no one's gonna report her missing because there's no contact there. Investigators actually reported that her last known address was in Clifton, New Jersey. In the weeks before her death, she was staying at a Mount Airy Lodge in Mount Pocono, Pennsylvania. Now is the perfect time, and the season is just right. You can play all day and dance into the night. At beautiful Mount Airy Lodge. Christine had worked in a clothing store that went by the name of Rainbow Shops in New Jersey. The dress that she was wearing on the day of her murder was actually from that store. It's unknown what she was doing in Staten Island on the day of her murder and the investigation for that is still ongoing. The lead up to her death is very mysterious. Nobody seems to know what happened. It was then sadly revealed by one of her brothers that Christine actually had a two-year-old daughter at the time of her death. Her daughter's name is Christina Nicole and sadly nobody knows the whereabouts of her. She was born on August 1st 1989 and she would be 33 years old now which is the same age as me. The Centre for Missing and Exploited Children has created an age progression photo to show what Christine's daughter might look like now in hopes that someone could recognise her. There's a chance that she could have been kidnapped or with the father. Nobody knows who the father is to track him down and see if he knows anything. Detectives have searched records for missing children or children that were found dead at the time of Christine's death, but nothing has been proved to be connected to the case of Christine. The investigation for Christine's murder is still ongoing. There are still many questions left unanswered. McMahon and investigators working on the case do believe that the murderer is probably linked to Christine. It's not just a random attack. They believe it was someone that Christine knew at the time just because of the way the murder went down. It, they believe it was a crime of passion. This whole case is so incredibly sad. To only be known because of your tattoo for 30 years is so heartbreaking. And I truly hope that investigators do continue working on this case and get answers as to who the killer is and what happened the days before Christine's death. And hopefully there is some answers to her daughter as to where she is or what happened to her. If you happen to know any information, I will leave relative links and information down below. If you think you know someone that looks like the age progression photo, then please do contact authorities. This is obviously incredibly important. And yeah, I truly hope that there is some answers very soon and whoever is responsible gets held accountable and justice is served. This whole case has me wondering how many times has investigators and the authorities relied on people's tattoos? I know there was an incident here in the UK not too long ago in Brighton. There was a body that washed up and the person had tattoos and the police relied very heavily on the tattoos to identify who the person was. Tattoos can be incredibly helpful when it comes to identifying people, especially those that have been through some horrific things, you know, when someone has been abused and battered so badly, it will just take a medical examiner to look at someone's body and be like, oh, there's a tattoo and it can identify someone, especially nowadays, you know, back in 1991, there was obviously people getting tattoos, but how tattoos have progressed lately, especially in the last, what, 10 years, there are tattoo artists that now specialise in specific styles and you can identify who has done that tattoo just because of their style. There are many times when people post photos in my Facebook group of their tattoos and I can tell who the artist is without even looking at their caption or anything because I'm like, oh, that's that signature style. And it makes me wonder, are we going to see an increase of authorities relying on people's tattoos to help identify bodies or even criminals? All they have to do is share a photo or a sketch of a tattoo that a victim or criminal could have, you know, from maybe CCTV footage or whatever. And all it takes is for that specific tattoo artist to be like, hey, I did that. That was this client and give them as much information as they most possibly can. You know, we all sign consent forms tattoo artists hold on to those so they'll be able to look back through them and see you know a name and address and all of that and of course there's a chance that there could be a fake name used but there's also a chance that it couldn't so tattoos can 
possibly be incredibly helpful going forward when it comes to criminal cases. There's also this theory that you're less likely to be trafficked should you have tattoos just because you're so identifiable. I'm not sure how true that is. I haven't really looked into it to be honest with you so I don't want to speak upon it too much but I, it would make sense, you know, especially as someone that is covered as me. I'm very identifiable because of my tattoos, you would recognise me. But then of course with human trafficking you don't always stay in one place. Someone that's tattooed like me could end up in another country where nobody would recognise my tattoos or what have you. I don't know. That's a whole other thing. Very interested to know about your thoughts on tattoos and true crime. Do you think authorities will start to rely on them heavily going forward? Should they not be able to identify bodies like the girl with the scorpion tattoo? Sadly, that tattoo didn't result in any answers, but there's a possibility like the case I was talking about that happened in Brighton, where it could be. Anyway, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Please make sure you take care of you. I know this video was quite heavy, so make sure you take a breath of fresh air. And until my next video, bye.